Hey, welcome back everybody to the Bulletproof Handyman Business Channel. So we got a big one to do today. I need to do another jobber review because the last one I did six months ago, about a month after I published it, was already obsolete. Jobber, they move fast. They're always putting new features and new functionality out. So just about anything you watch now that's more than two months old is already obsolete and outdated. So we're going to go through Jobber again today with all the new features, all the new functionality and I'm going to take you from beginning to end and just show you what the software does, how it does it, and how you can use it to run your business. All the good, the bad, the ugly, the ins and outs, uh, but this is definitely going to be a big one. I do promise you I'm going to make a very sincere effort to condense all of the most important information that you're going to need up near the front of this video and then as we progress through the video what I'm going to try to do is make sure that the more nuanced stuff, the more nuanced features, the things that really sell me on Jobber, the reasons that I love Jobber, those are going to be more towards the end because I've been using it a while and as I've dove deeper and deeper I've just kept figuring out they really do have everything I need. They have things that I haven't even barely used yet and I'm still learning but they're always improving, always iterating. It's it's great software. Uh, if you watch my channel much, you already know I've been using Jobber for over three years now. I've run my entire business. This entire handyman business has been run from beginning to end with Jobber, which is great because I have my entire history of my entire business. Every job I've ever done, all of the client communications, the photos, just everything. It's all here in one location for me, the entire history of the business. I think that's super important. So before we get too deep into anything, I want to give you just a few main takeaways. If nothing else, if you know these takeaways, you're going to have a better idea of what's going on with this software. Number one, most importantly, is Jobber is intuitive. When I first purchased Jobber, I had just now started my business, and somebody called me. I don't even really know how they got my number. It was over three years ago. I had just started, and somebody from Jobber kind of cold called me to ask me if I would be interested in looking at the software. They wanted to like guide me through it over the computer, over the phone. And basically what I said was, hey, I'm super busy, so I'll tell you what I'll do. Send me your link. I'll click on it tonight when I get home. And what I'm going to do is with no instruction, no training videos, no review videos, I didn't know anything about their software yet. And I said, look, if I can open this software up and it's intuitive, if I can just look at it and be able to easily figure out what button I'm going to need to click to do the thing I need to do, if I can do that, then we'll talk tomorrow. So I went home, I got my free trial, and it just it's so intuitive. It's insanely intuitive. If you're worried that you're not going to be able to figure out how to use it, that's the last worry that should be on your mind. Super intuitive. And by the way, I do have a link in the description of this video for you to get your free trial if you would like to. And also keep in mind, um, you guys can email me at bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. I'll say that again, bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. If you have additional questions about this software or if you're already using it and you just have some questions about how to actually harness some of the functionality, I make a point to answer every single comment, every single email, anybody who needs any help when it comes to starting and running their handyman or any home service based business I make a point to answer those so don't hesitate to reach out bulletproof handyman business at gmail.com so number two main takeaway is jobber does everything I've kind of already said this you've already heard me say it but when I say everything I do mean everything my accountant has back-end access to it he takes care of all my accounting through it it'll track your expenses whatever it is you need to do within your home service based business handyman or otherwise whatever it is you need your software to do I can already tell you jobber does it and we're gonna dive into all those things it does and then finally, Jobber will grow with you or shrink with you. It's not an all or nothing kind of software. It's not some big expensive thing that you have to purchase and learn all of the ins and outs about. If you're just now getting started, I mean just now getting started, you can get on one of their smaller plans and you can just very intuitively create your jobs, create your quotes, get stuff signed off, get stuff invoiced, and get your payments coming in all through Jobber. 
but it will grow with you. So you can start off small and as your business grows or as you just realize that you're now comfortable enough with Jobber to use that next level of functionality or you need that next level of functionality, you can just upgrade your plan or you can start out on a bigger plan because you're certain you want to use it and a few months in if you realize you don't necessarily need all of those features and you want to save a little money, you can drop that plan down. But you're never stuck on anything with Jobber. It works for guys who are doing part-time 15 hours a week after work in the evenings on the weekends it works for those guys and it'll work for a company with 40 employees and 13 trucks and a whole warehouse full of inventory it'll grow and shrink with your business so with all that being said let me tell you how we're gonna lay this video out real fast in case you want to skip around the first thing I'm going to do is give you a very quick, broad overview of what the software does. Very quick, very broad. After that, I'm going to go over my favorite features. And that's so that if you don't have time to stick around for a lot of the more nuanced stuff, you'll at least know what the features are that I think are the most important that sell me on the software so that you can figure out if those features are important to you. Once we go over those favorite features, I'm going to take you through a very quick example job. We're not going to dive super deep on this example job. I'm just going to show you how quick and easy it is from scratch with no experience to just create a job, sign it off, send the invoice and get paid. And then what we're going to do after that, finally, and this is honestly my favorite part that I get the most excited about because I've been using Jobber so long, that's when we're going to go in depth. We're going to start opening up these menus and I'm going to start showing you the functionality that you didn't know you need, but it's going to be very obvious that you're going to be using it once you see that you can use it. It's going to save you so much time. And that for me is very important because my business is very data driven. I don't make willy nilly decisions with this business. I'm very aware on a daily basis that my time is limited, my time is valuable, and I don't put any money, resources, or time or any other sort of investment into anything that isn't bringing me value in return for that investment. And it's the time that Jobber saves me, consolidating everything that I need consolidated all into one location, all the history of my business, searchable, filterable, accessible by my accountant, accessible through a client portal by my clients. It's, it's the one-stop shop for running this business, and it saves me way too much time. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I, I have been a little sick. I'm better now, but I've just still got some respiratory stuff left over, so I may cough once or twice. I do apologize. Uh, so again, in the description is a link for your free trial. Uh, if you use my link, you get 20% off. So let's go into what it does. Um, number one, Jobber allows for requests. So anybody who has the link or it has a form that you can embed on your website or wherever it is that you want to embed this form. But first and foremost is if you have a website or if you have a way to get links to people, there's a link and or a form that will allow people to create requests for you. And one of the things this is going to do is when they create this request, they're going to be putting themselves into your software as a client. They can't make the request without sort of creating themselves as a client with their name, address, phone number, etc. So it's going to take all your requests and it's going to save you that time where you don't have to go create them within your software as a client because you're going to need to track you need to know who your clients are and you need to track them over time so that you can keep them engaged with your business next uh, very similar to the requests is online booking and it's kind of the same thing and instead of being a request they're just gonna go ahead and book your services right then and there you can create your services within the software you can embed your form on your website you can send them to the link but they're gonna be able to go into jobber from their end and just actually book you after you've set up what hours you're available and what jobs are available to be booked. They can just come and actually see your openings on your schedule. So without you having to do any work, again, you get jobs booked without having to lift a finger. And that's pretty handy as well. Next, once you've got the request or the booking, you, you're the first step in most jobs, unless they already know that they want to pay you and how much. 
is writing estimates. So you're going to be able to use Jobber to write all your estimates. They're going to be professional estimates that are going to make it clear to your clients that you're a business and not just a handyman. And these estimates, I'll dive into this later, but they also have it set up with a grow plan where you they can your clients can approve or deny one line item at a time. You can add optional line items to anything. So say you're on a job, they asked you to come do an estimate for some fascia replacement. You show up and look at the fascia and you also notice three other things on the property that need to get fixed. So you send them the fascia estimate, but you can add as optional line items those other things you saw and how much you would be charging to fix them. And they can just click to approve or not click to approve. And that's going to help you grow your revenue and make sure that you're always upselling and making the most out of each job. Next is jobs. Obviously, you're going to be able to create once the estimate's approved or if there's no estimate and they just know they want to hire you, you create your job in here. Every job is labeled, numbered, serialized, and tracked. That's where you're going to have all your information about that specific job all in one place. When you finish the job, Jobber's going to do the invoicing for you as well. So all your invoices are in one location, from lo one location, tracked from one location, and you're going to be able to get those invoices. It'll send them via text message. It'll send them via email. Uh, they can do also the next feature is secure payments. Pretty basic thing, but a lot of guys are using like other free or cheap software, but then they have to go get some other software to receive their online payments and whatnot. So people can pay you over the web or on their phone. You can take payments any way you want, but Jobber does have secure payments to be made. Next is follow-ups. That's one of my bigger, more favorite features is the follow-ups. So when you send out an estimate and it hasn't gotten approved yet, instead of you having to go look at all your estimates, figure out which ones weren't approved, and pick up the phone and call those clients, Jobber is going to see, depending on what you tell it you would like it to do, it's going to see estimates that haven't been approved or denied yet and send some follow-up reminders for that. It's also going to do that for invoices. If you send an invoice and it doesn't get paid quickly, Jobber will see that. If you've asked Jobber to, it will see that and it will send reminders to get those invoices paid. It'll also send receipts when they do pay the invoice. It'll send receipts. Uh, now, I don't use QuickBooks, but I know a lot of guys that really love QuickBooks. So just so you know, Jobber does connect to QuickBooks. They've gotten together and they've meshed their software so that QuickBooks knows and understands everything that's in Jobber. And it will migrate back and forth for you so that whatever you do in the Jobber software, if let's say you have like a secretary that you've hired and she wants to use QuickBooks. So if that's the case, you can still do everything within Jobber and still have that full accounting of all of your business records in one location, but it'll also just synchronize itself with QuickBooks so that your accountant or your secretary, if they want to, can use it for that. And then finally, reports. The reports are a nice one. I don't need them all the time, but when it's time, like for example, it's January 4th today, so 2023 just ended. I'm able to go into Jobber and pull all kinds of reports for 2023. I can see charts about my workload throughout the year. I can see my invoices. I can see how much total I invoiced. I can break that down between materials and labor if I want to know just how much labor I invoiced. All the data... All the data that you put in here, every single bit of it, has a report that it can come out on and it's all filterable, it's all searchable. So again, I think that the dead horse that I keep beating here is the software is a one-stop shop for running your business. Everything you need to do is right here. So that takes us through the first part that I told you I'd do is a quick broad overview. So now you do have that overview. You're aware of how from beginning to end, Jobber is going to help you run your business. Next, I would like to get into the, my personal, it's not just that these are my favorite features, but what I think are the most important features that you guys should know about again in case you can't stick around on this video long enough to get to the very end because a lot of these features are, are in the more in-depth stuff but if you know right off the bat they have it you can go ahead and go find it and start using it right away because a lot of these features are going to help you make more revenue and make your clients happier 
All right, so the first feature, let's see, where are we going to start out at? How about this one? Instant payouts. This is not even really an in-depth feature, but instant payouts. So let's say you've put in an estimate for a job and you've said, hey, I'm going to need a thousand dollar down payment to start this job because you need to purchase materials and whatnot. So it's a, you know, eighteen hundred dollar job. You need a thousand dollars for materials. The estimate gets approved. Uh, by the way, when they approve the estimate, if if a deposit is required, they'll be able to pay that deposit right there when they open up whether on their phone or on the computer, when they open up that estimate and approve it, there's a button for approve and pay deposit, and they just pay that securely right then and there. But what the instant payouts are is, let's say you got a $1,000 deposit, and you can't start the work until you get that $1,000, right? So they make their payment with their credit card, but depending on what banks you're using, both of you, depending on the banks, it's going to be four or five days before that $1,000 clears and makes it into your bank account so you can go purchase those materials. Well, if you don't want to wait four or five days with Jobber, you can do an instant payout. So that $1,000, as soon as your customer makes that deposit electronically and everything gets run through, instead of waiting four or five days, it's going to be available for you to click a button that says instant payout. And when you click that instant payout button, you can get that $1,000 the same day. And that's a big deal because if you can get it the same day, then you can go ahead and get those materials purchased, get started on that job today, or at least get started on that job tomorrow. There is a fee, but it's 1% which is like nothing. So if it's a $1,000 job, 1% 1 of $1,000 is $10. So for 10 bucks, you don't have to wait five days to get that $1,000. I think that is a huge selling point. Now, I'm fairly well established now because I've been doing this for over three years now. So I don't frequently need the instant payouts but even being as established as I am and typically having some capital in the bank to purchase materials so that I don't have to wait, there have still been three or four times this year where I used instant payouts simply because the money was there. You know, I wasn't dying without it. I could have still got my job done. But it's really convenient to just be able, you know, for 1%, to just get that whole payout right away and take care of whatever business it is you need to get taken care of. The 1% to me is a very small fee for that. Next, let's go to uh, automated follow-ups. I mentioned this earlier. So the way the automated follow-ups work, and we are going to dive into this later more deeply, but I'm going to give you a quick rundown right now. These are basically, for the most part, these have to do with uh, quotes and invoices. Those are the two things that you're always needing to follow up on. So as an example, you know, I have probably today, I bet you I have 20 something estimates out there. And some of them are from three, four weeks ago. Some of them are from a week ago. But I've got a lot of estimates that are out right now. For me to sit down and call a dozen of those people and or text and or email, for me to put five minutes worth of attention into each of those dozen is already, you're talking about 60 minutes, so that's an hour. If I did that once a week, then I would be putting an hour a week into following up on just a dozen estimates, and it could very well be even more than that. And time is money. Time is valuable. This entire business, if you're running your own business like this, and you're staying busy, Time is your most important asset. So if it saves me an hour, because what it does is I can set it up. I already have set mine up to where you can tell it, hey, if you haven't gotten a response back from an estimate, uh, let's say for three days, you want to pick three days. So three days after I send an estimate, if you haven't heard anything back, send a follow up reminder to either approve or deny the estimate. And by the way, you can customize that as well. Whatever the message is, it can be a custom message from you asking them to go ahead and approve or deny that estimate. And then you can have another one. So say you want to wait three days for the first one and then 10 days for the second one. So and then 10 days later, you can say, okay, if you haven't heard anything in 10 days, then send another follow-up on this estimate. And it'll do the same thing for invoices. So you send an invoice. You know, most people aren't going to pay you same day. 
uh, whether you need them to or not. Just most people, if you're not beating down their front door trying to get your money, they're probably going to wait a day or two. But same thing with invoices. Jobber can be set up to where when you send that invoice out, you can say, okay, give them 48 hours to pay that invoice and then send an email reminder that they have an invoice that's due. And then five days after that, if they still haven't paid, send them a text message reminder that that invoice needs to be paid. And that just saves you all this time because, again, if I have to put in an hour a week to follow up on estimates and if I have to put in an hour and a half a week to follow up on invoices that haven't been paid, that's two and a half hours a week that I keep having to put in. And, you know, my business, for example, I try to be, I try to be billable at at least $100 an hour, if not more, for any hour that I'm working. So to burn two and a half hours a week is to burn $250 a week times four weeks a month is $1,000 worth of my time. Time that I could have used to go make that $1,000 or if I didn't need to go make it, time I could have used to be wrapping up all the other things in my life or focusing on getting new clients or on training future employees. Any number of things you need to be doing, two and a half hours a week is a lot of time. So for me, the automated follow-ups are extremely valuable. You don't really notice that you don't have that feature when you've never had that feature or thought about that feature. But once you have it and you use it, you realize, oh my God, I could never go back in time and not have Jobber and be needing to sit down for hours upon hours every single week just following up on things that my computer could be following up on for me. So we got that one out of the way. What else do we have? Ah, this is a good one, guys. This one, I feel like Jobber doesn't understand the value that they have here because they're not charging anything extra for this. So I'm going to tell you about what, what I think is one of the craziest features they have. And it's called internal notes and attachments. Now, the general idea behind this is just for you to have a place so we're going to get into the client portal soon, but just FYI, the clients have their own portal into your software where they can see certain things that apply to them and only them. They can't see other people's stuff and they can't see anything you don't want them to see, but they can look at different lists of like, they can look at all their estimates that they need to approve or deny. They have their own portal, right? Internal notes and attachments, the main idea behind this is that they're internal. They don't get shared externally with your client or anyone else unless you choose, unless you actually click to add those in such a way that they can be seen. Well, here's the secret, guys. In this business, as a handyman, I take pictures of everything I do. I take, I take pictures when I'm looking at a job just to write an estimate. I take before pictures once a job is approved and I get to the job. I take before pictures of everything, including just my surrounding area, so that there's never any confusion as to what the condition of everything was before I started versus when I finished. And then, of course, I take after pictures after the job is done. And these pictures, you know, most pictures are, let's say, like one megabyte to five or six megabytes for a pretty large file that's just a photo. So I got all these pictures, right? It might be 20 to 100 pictures per job, if not more for even bigger jobs. Now, normally what happens is they fill up your phone. They fill your entire phone up all the way to the top within like three months with a brand new phone. You're already running out of data storage in your phone because you've just filled it to the brim with pictures. With Jobber, you can attach all those pictures. In fact, you can take them through the app. You can just open the Jobber app and click on Add Attachment or Add Note. I, I don't recall the exact wording of it right at this moment. But you can open up your job on your app, click a button to add a picture, and take the picture through the app. It never even finds its way onto your phone, only into the app. You put all your pictures for every job attached to that job, and it just gets stored forever. And there's no data limits. There's a, there's a limit of 10 megabytes per photo. So any one individual photo can't be bigger than 10 megabytes, which literally none of mine have ever been. But aside from the 10 megabytes per photo, there's no limit to how many megabytes or gigabytes of photos you can attach to each job. And there's no limit to what total quantity of, you know, terabytes, if you want, 
of photos that are stored in Jobber. And then this builds year after year after year after year. It's all there and it never goes anywhere. And I looked into a couple years ago because I was using my phone at first. I looked into purchasing online cloud storage for storing all of my photos because I realized my phone's filling up. I can't just get rid of all that history. I need that to stay as part of the business's records. And the amount that I had to pay to set up online storage was insane. And then I figured out what Jobber had going on and I realized I don't need to pay anybody to store photos online because Jobber is literally going to store all of my photos indefinitely. Will they ever figure this out and start charging extra for it? I don't know. Maybe someday I would if I was in charge. But they've had this feature for a long time and there are no limits. So that's a huge thing for me. That is actual value. Like I would be paying about 150 a month for storage for online cloud storage right now just for all the photos for the last three years of running this business. And instead I pay nothing for it. So next, let's go ahead and dive into the client hub I was telling you about. The client hub is a way, now I work for property managers, right? So if you're working for anybody who's sending you lots of work over the course of time, they're not just little one-off jobs for customers that you'll never have again. Um, these guys, what they have is a client portal and they can't see anything that has anything to do with any other clients of yours, only their stuff. And they can't see anything personal of yours to your business. All they can see is what you select to allow them to see from their portal. They can go in there and make requests. They can go in there and open up their quotes and stuff. They can go in there and pay invoices, but it's a portal just for them. So let's say you have like a small property management company. They've got like 50 houses and you're doing three jobs a week for them maybe. They're a small company, so they haven't paid for their own software. They haven't felt like they needed it because they've always just been able to sort of do everything on paper. So what they have now with you, if you're their handyman, is they have a place that they can go to to see the organization of their jobs and how everything is looking, what invoices are due, what estimates need to be approved, etc. So the client hub is, you know, it's not the most important thing in the world, but it's not something that almost any other software out there is going to give them. Next feature that I think you need to know about before I start diving into the deep dive is job forms. This is one of those features that I believe came out after the last video. If not, then maybe right before. But what a job form is, is you can come in here, and I'm going to show you all, all of this as we do the deep dive in a minute. But you can come in here and you can create your own custom forms for whatever you want. So to give you an example of one of mine is I have an inspection checklist. I inspect most of my move outs when I do the move outs or if I'm doing anything at all on a vacant property especially. I go through and do a general inspection if I'm not too busy. But if I want extra work, if I want more work, I inspect everything myself and I use that inspection to create a new estimate for them that's going to have those optional line items. So I can give them the original estimate that they asked for at the top. But below that, all the other things I noticed, I can just throw in there as optional line items. And if they don't want them done, they don't have to get them done. But if they go, oh yeah, well, we should probably get that fixed, they can just click on those and approve them, wrap it all into one job. But my inspection form is in Jobber. It's attached to the job. You can attach whichever form you want to attach to whatever job you want to attach it to. And then when I'm on site, say I'm doing my inspection, I've got it up on my phone, I'm going through the list, and I'm reading, you know, it says uh, check for door stoppers, let's say. So I start walking around and I find a door stopper that's missing. So right here on the app in my phone, I could just go ahead and click on that and then I hit the microphone button and I say door stopper missing to master bedroom, double click my power button, take a picture of it. Now I've got the picture saved as well and then move on to the next line item. And then that all, everything that you put on that 
job form, that job form, similar to the pictures, stays attached to that job forever. If it's attached to the job now, it stays there, so you'll be able to go back later and look through your inspection checklist and see what was there. If you want, you can forward that inspection checklist to your client, say they've asked you to do the inspection, then you can go ahead and forward that checklist where they can read all of your findings in there. But I find the job forms to be useful. I also use them for, uh, let's say I send another handyman out, like a subcontract one of my jobs out to him for fixing a leaky sink. I've got a form that says at the end of any sink work, this is like my business's policy, anytime work's done on a sink, the very last thing to be done is for both basins to be plugged, filled to the top, and then both plugs pulled simultaneously with the garbage disposal turned on, which pressurizes the pipes beneath and check for leaks. And you got to do that twice. That's my policy for my business. Anytime you work on a sink, you got to do that. Well, I don't know if they remember to do that unless they tell me or I ask them every time. So what I do now is I attach that job form anytime I'm sending somebody else a job with a leaky sink. They can't close out the job until they filled out that task form and said, yes, I filled both basins, pulled the plugs, turned on the garbage disposal, and checked for leaks and verified that there are no leaks. So I love the job forms. Next thing that I'm still diving into lately, I haven't gotten fully into it, but I have started using it on a per job basis, is expense tracking. This one definitely came out literally days after I did the last video. They didn't have it, I did the video, and then days later, boom, all of a sudden expense tracking comes out. And it's great, and I'm gonna dive into it here too, by the way, when I, when I do the deep dive. But the short of it is, within any given job, let's say you have to run to Ace Hardware and buy, you know, like a $3 part. You can go into the expense tracking, and it's all on the app as well. So you just open your phone up, and you can go add that. You take a picture of the receipt and add it as an expense. Say what it is. Attach it to the job. If it's, uh, let's say, somebody else that's working for you had to go spend their own money for some reason on an extra little part that we didn't anticipate needing, they can even put that in there and say that it's reimbursable to them. And then later on when you're doing payroll, which you can also do in Jobber, when you're doing payroll, you can go in there, open up that person within the app here and see that you have three receipts from this week where they've taken the picture of it, they've attached it to the job, they've said exactly what it is so everyone's on the same page and what the price is so you can get them reimbursed for that. So the expense tracking was one of the really big, more recent improvements that, like I said, I haven't dove all the way in. There are more features attached to it that I just haven't had the time to explore yet, but that's a really big one that I know is good. And then while we're at it, uh, users and payroll and what I mean by that these two kind of go together so payroll is jobber is set up so that let's say you hire a helper 15 hours a week so he needs to clock in and out somewhere you set him up as a user within jobber and I'm gonna show you all a little bit about how to do that as well but you get a new guy you set him up as a user within the app you know you've made an agreement you're gonna pay him twenty dollars an hour well he can clock in and clock out on the app for each job that he's on <clears throat> and that will track his time and then you can go in here into timesheets and you can approve his timesheet notice that he spent a little bit of his own money on some materials add that to the paycheck cut his paycheck and then document in here that he was paid so uh, like for me with a grow plan I can have up to 15 users I think I've got 13 right now because I've got a just a, a medley of people that aren't deeply involved in this business, but I, you know, I've got a painter that I subcontract out painting to sometimes. I've got a drywall guy that I sub out some drywall to. I've got my son working for me. He's basically full time, so I can track a lot of his stuff on there. Um, I had a, a niece that was going to be doing some inspections for me. We didn't pan that out all the way, but I was able to add her. I've just got a lot of people in here, and each one of them is set up as a user. So as I create a job, there's a little button that says Assign To, and you can assign jobs to people, and it'll send them an email. They can go in and update their schedule. They can track their time. But I do like having the users and the payroll option. Uh, finally... 
Let's see, I went over the time savings already. There's a billion ways that it saves time, but that for me is kind of the main point, so it's kind of repeated in here a little bit. Uh, here we go. So we're going to do custom line items. I already kind of told you about the optional line items, right? You can have line items added to an estimate that are optional. So you can give them the estimate at the top that they asked for, but you can add optional upgrades or optional additional work that you found that you want to do. But what else you can do is you can make custom line items, which is how I do most of my business. I do a lot of move outs. So these are vacant properties that need like a list of six to a dozen different little things fixed. And these property managers, they very rarely do a very good job of truly fully inspecting the place to make sure that it's going to be fixed and ready for the next tenant. And then what happens is the next tenant moves in and because we didn't find everything and fix everything, now we're having to schedule around that tenant schedule to get back in there when we could have already wrapped it all up before. So these custom line items, anyways, what I do is, you know, like I do the inspection I was telling you about using the job forms. By the way, guys, you can also go to the description of this video down at the bottom. There's a link for requesting documents from me. I don't charge anything for them. No paywalls on this channel ever, ever, ever. And you can download my inspection checklist. Unfortunately, I can't give it to you in the form of a CSV file for you to import. However, with these custom line items, I can. So let me explain how this works <coughs> because this was, this was really a game changer for my business in terms of efficiency and revenue. So as a handyman, most of my work is very repetitive. A leaky sink is a leaky sink, replacing a garbage disposal, um, building a new window screen, fixing a pop-up stopper in a bathroom sink, putting in light bulbs, swapping out ceiling fans, all these things get repeated over and over and over. And that's where you get to start making money is when you start getting more efficient with these. So one of the efficiencies that you get is you can create custom line items for your quotes and for your invoices. And what these are is, you know, I charge exactly the same amount every time I fix a pop-up stopper on a bathroom sink. That's where you pull that little plunger up and down and then the plunger in the sink comes up and down to hold the water or drain the water. I just do those all for like $50 now. I don't remember what my current price is. Um, but I do them all for the same price. And now I have a custom line item. So if I'm writing an estimate, let's say I do that inspection at that move out and I notice a pop-up stopper that a property manager missed. I can go in here to the estimate and I can just add that pop-up stopper as a custom line item so I don't need to type out three sentences to say what I found and what I need to do about it. Instead, what I do is I type, you know, pop, just P-O-P, -P, and then boom, it'll autofill and see that I have a custom line item that's already pre-typed out and I can double click on that, which automatically adds it to the quote. It automatically has the pricing. If I find two of them, then I just adjust the quantity to two it adds up the total over here and then adds up the total at the bottom once the the client excuse me once the client approves or denies everything so these custom line items save me again let's say I come home let's say I do four estimates a week it's it, it varies throughout the year but say I do four estimates a week and three quarters of the items on each of those estimates are things that I do repetitively that I have these line items for. So if I'm saving, let's just make up five minutes per estimate, and I'm doing four estimates per week. So at five minutes per estimate is going to be 20 minutes a week, so that's going to be you know 80 minutes a month. All these little things matter and all these little things add up. Same thing with the invoicing. When I go to invoice, instead of typing in exactly what I did and how I did it, when I write the invoice, I just go get my drop down menu and I click on the thing that I did that I've done a million times before that I have set pricing for and it just adds it and then I you know, put the quantity in in case it was more than one of them. Totals everything up down at the bottom. It does all that work for me. 
So that's all of my favorites, guys. I mean, really, I have 20 more favorites, but those are the things I really wanted you all to know that Jobber will do for you, uh, just in case you do need to click off this video and go take care of other business, because some of y'all are running and or starting these businesses right now. So next, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go into Jobber right here. Uh, this is my demo account, so it doesn't have any any phone numbers, guys. Any phone numbers, addresses, anything else you see in here. This is my demo account. I've got this set up so that there is no personal or sensitive information. So anything you see in here is basically made up for the sake of being able to give you these. So the next thing I said I was going to do was an example job. So let's pretend like you've never used Jobber before. You don't have other software that you're currently using you don't know what to do here you open it up this is your actually let's make sure we're on our home screen so let's click on home this will be your home screen this is where we're gonna start all of these explorations from so you're at your home screen right somebody's called you and said hey I got a leaky sink can you come fix my leaky sink on the phone and you've said yeah yeah I can come fix your leaky sink it'll be a minimum of hundred and twenty five dollars and probably won't go over but if it were gonna go over I'll let you know before I get started but otherwise it'll be hundred and twenty five they say okay great we've got the agreement and you say you know send me your your address and everything else so that I can get you in my software they send it to you now you sit down at Jobber this is your first job with your brand new business you've never used Jobber so you come over here and you go well okay I see this menu I see create so let's click on create Oh, okay we can create a client we can create a request we can create a quote we can create a job or we can create an invoice so you know right away well I'm either gonna create a client or a job but the question is do I have to create the client before the job or can I create the client while I'm creating the job well guess what jobber thought all that through you just create the job so now you come over here you just go to the top guys don't worry about anything else that you see around here right at the top it says job for client name with a big plus symbol okay so here we go now these are clients that I've already made and put into this software so if I click on one it's gonna just automatically fill that in now we've got the client in here but you haven't made any yet so let's go back to create job again client name create new client this is where you're gonna fill out all your clients information their title first name last name company name phone number email address if you're like me and you work on lots of separate properties one of the things you want to do is click or unclick billing address is the same as property address because you're gonna have different addresses and you're gonna have multiple properties if you're working for property managers but again Jobbers already thought this through. The software doesn't only work for homeowners who have one specific property and it's their only property. This works for clients who have multiple properties. So client name, let's use one of my autofill ones here. And then we want a title. So the title, what I always do is I highlight the address and I paste it here into the box. So there's the address and then I'm going to say leaky sink now this title tells me both the address and what's wrong and this is how I'm gonna remember this job in the future I'm gonna go oh yeah remember that one on Ranchettes Drive with a leaky sink now over here these are custom line items that I've put in you don't have to have these I've customized my jobber to include these for my property manager so we're gonna dive into those later you won't have those or need to worry about those if you don't add them so next is schedule. So you agreed that you're going to come over tomorrow at 9 a.m. So click January 5th, start time. There's the 9, change that p.m. to a.m. If you don't want to schedule it right away, you can click schedule later. But otherwise, there we go. There's 9 a.m., assign to. If it's only you, of course, you're going to assign it to yourself. But if you have other people that are doing work for you, you can click on their name after you set them up as a user. So we're going to assign this to me. And then we're going to come down here. And labor is an automatic one. Now, I don't charge hourly. If you're charging hourly, then you can just already have told it that your labor hourly charge is $100 an hour, $80 an hour, $200, whatever your charge is. I don't do that. When I create my jobs, I just delete that part for the labor and I say re repair, 
leaky sink. And that's sort of, for me, that serves as instructions. Now there is an instructions block up at the top, but I don't use that. I just type it into the labor block, quantity one, unit cost, unit price. This is the, the expense tracking and stuff I was talking about. We're not gonna dive into that yet, just showing you how simple this software is. So I say repair leaky sink, I come down here, I'm done, boom, save job. So now we've got this job saved. We go out there tomorrow and we do the job. And you can do this on your phone or on a tablet right there at the job if you want to just wrap all this up before you come home. Or you can come home and invoice. But let's say I went ahead and decided, you know, I had four other jobs. I'm going to knock them all out and then I'm going to come home and invoice. So you come home. You've got this job saved, right? Let's go to jobs real quick. So now we're in jobs. You come home and you need to get this job done. And we're looking for... January 5th, there it is. You open up the job. And then you can come down here and click on that labor line. Now that you fix the sink, you can say replaced strainer basket on leaky sink. Boom. So that's what you did. And then you come over here to total. You told them it was going to be 125. The job went smooth. It is 125. So you type 125. Click save. You don't need to worry about this if you don't want to. You don't need to worry about this if you don't want to. This is how simple this is. And then here's your visit right here. So you can close this job out one of two ways. Some jobs may have multiple visits. So that's when you're going to want to click on this and just close out one visit. However, if you only have one visit, then you can click on this and click Mark Complete. And then you can click Close Job. Now the other way you can close a job instead of down there where I clicked on that and marked it complete is you can always come over here to more actions and then click close job as well. You can do that either way. But now you've closed this job out and you've said it's complete and you've got a price in here. Let's generate invoice now, which by the way you do by clicking generate invoice. I don't know if I need to take you back for that, but let's go back. Jobs closed out. You're all done. You want to know how to make an invoice? You just click Generate Invoice. And then you can pick which job it is. It's this one right here because you may have other jobs that are also closed out. So you click the job that you want to invoice. Next step. And here's the invoice. Now what I like to do for the subject, again, oh, that's the uh, billing address. Let's go to the service address. So I copy that service address again paste it into here up at the top of the subject line just like before leaky sink there we go you're not worried about any of these those are custom we'll dive into that later labor replace a strainer basket on leaky sink let's add those materials boom there's a drop down already says materials description strainer basket there we go and you paid I don't know $12 for that strainer basket. That sounds fine with me. Now you've got a total of 137. You don't need to do anything else. You can click save and. Now you can send this to them as a text message if you have their phone number put in under the client or send it to them as an email. So click save and, send as email. And you can come up here. You can add people to this email. So say I want to send it to myself. I can also send it to myself. If you want to, you can include a PDF of the invoice. Otherwise, they're just going to open the electronic version. You can customize what this says down here if you want, but you don't need to. If you took a picture, then your picture would be here, and you would also be able to click on that to attach it to this invoice if necessary. And send email. You're done with this job now. Even with me doing a lot of talking and sort of explaining things throughout, we just created a job and signed off a job and invoiced a job in something less than five minutes. So that's how simple this software is. If you're brand new and you don't do anything else, you don't want to know any other functionality, you don't care what any of these are down here on the side, you don't care about anything popping up here and all of these different settings, best case scenario, worst case scenario, just getting started, you just click create job and you do the things I just showed you. It takes almost no time at all. So let's go ahead and mark out example job. All right, Whew. now comes the in-depth part. 
So we're going to click on all these buttons, guys. Create client right up here at the top. This is where you put your client in. You put their name, their address, their phone numbers, all the information you need to know. It's got a box for additional client details. If you want to add additional t details, you can customize whether or not they're going to get follow-ups and reminders. You might have some clients that you want to be getting those follow-ups and other clients that you don't want them getting hassled with those follow-ups. But all your client information goes right here and then you save it and boom you've got a new client now create request I'm not gonna dive into that I don't really think you're going to be creating a request if you have a request then you have a request you don't really need to create a request for them uh, next is create a quote so under create a quote something I wanna show you here this is those custom line items now jobber comes with initially it's going to have labor materials um i think this yeah i actually created this inspection one it's going to have labor materials hours and sales and i think those are the only line items you'll have that are just ready to go for you to click now these are all mine so remember i was telling you about doing inspections and adding different things to these estimates you can come up here and add a smoke detector i've already made this and by the way i think i told you if i didn't you can go to the description of this video you can go to where you can download my documents that's right i haven't told you this and i'm going to show you more about it in a minute but you can download a file that has all of my custom line items. Every single one of these is in a CSV file that you can download. And then you can then upload them into your job or account so you don't have to create all of these. You may want to go back and adjust the pricing. I'm doing $10 per smoke detector. Maybe you're going to do 12 instead. But you can request all of mine and then that saves you days upon days of having to sort of go down your list and create all of your own. But anyways, let's say I want to add an optional line item now. So I click on Add Optional. I don't know if you saw that. See, there's Add Line Item. Here's Add Optional Line Item. There's also Add Text. So if you don't want it to be something that's getting paid for, doesn't even have a pricing box, you can click on Add Text. But anyways, let's click on Add Optional Line Item and go down here and let's say... Towel bar, tighten, reinstall, or install new. So I found a loose towel bar in the bathroom hanging half off the wall. I just click on this, and boom, it auto-fills everything with the description of exactly what I'm going to do about it. The quantity is one. The price is $35. It's already there. I don't need to do anything else. I didn't have to type that. I just clicked on it. Add another optional line item. Scroll down. How about switch plate, replace, or install new? Maybe there was five of them. Quantity 5, updates to $50, there you go. If you click recommend item, it will recommend the item and it will already have the price calculated down here at the bottom. If you don't click recommend item, it won't add that price to the bottom unless they click to approve that item, just so you know. Don't worry about client message, you don't really need to do anything with that. Um, so let's say you want to do a required deposit here's the required deposit button at the end of this estimate you're writing so you can tell it to do a specific dollar amount or you can say percentage like it's going to be 50 percent down for certain jobs and then oh we still need to select a client i didn't do that so right up here at the top select client and the client's going to be fancy nancy and then it's going to say which property because fancy nancy is a property manager so we have multiple properties under her or you can create a new property so let's click on that create new property i'm going to make up an address so as you can see as i type guys seven six you see how these are auto populating now so it's thinking I'm in California because this is my demo software it doesn't know I'm in Tucson but as you start typing the address out it's gonna start auto filling its best guess and then when you see the address pop up that's the actual address you click on it click create property and boom now you've created another property for fancy Nancy my clients have 
One of them is like 450 properties, the other one's at about 350 properties, and then I have a handful of clients that have fewer properties than that. But again, the software is tracking everything. Once you go do a job at that property and you add that property to that client, next time they want you to do a job there, you've already got the client, you just click on which client it is, and then it says which property, you click on which property it is, you come down here and you click on, you know, add line item, and you just click on it and I'm not having to type any of this out I'm not having to do any of this manually and then when you're finally done you can save and send us text message or you can save and send us email or if you already know it's approved and for some reason you just wanted there to be an estimate in the system for it you can just immediately convert to job or mark as a waiting response but let's say this is a normal estimate and you're gonna click save and send as email uh, correct the error below oh, the lion item wants a name because I did these blank lion items that I didn't actually put anything on again save and send as email and then now Nancy pops right up if you want you can delete this subject line to put in the address or whatever you want you can change all of the formatting for all of this down here you can attach the estimate as a PDF if you want. If you don't, they'll just have the electronic copy and they'll approve it and pay the deposit online. If you want to drag any files, this is when you can select files to put in here and then send email. And now you've written that quote. So that's pretty good deal. That's just some of the functionality of the quotes. I already took you through create job and now that you've seen uh, how to create a quote and a job the, the invoice is going to be the same kind of deal guys it's all the same blocks and stuff so let's move on past create we've already been to home let's go to the schedule tab there's a lot you can do on this schedule tab number one you can choose a day so you can look at the schedule for let's say the 23rd if you want to you can come over here and if you want to see this whole view that you've got in front of you at the moment is a calendar so you can say show me the month and it'll show you the month you can say show me the week and it's going to show you the exact same info but just for the week you can also do day now here's the feature I really like which is show me map so now it's got all of this on a map for me and I want to see the map for Let's go to, I think I have something. There we go on the 17th. I made these for a different video. So what I've done here is I've chosen January 17th. I want to see the schedule for January 17th. And I want to see it on a map. If I wanted to see it instead for January 17th on a list, there's January 17th on a list. Again, if I want to see it for the month, there it is on the month. And then you have filters over here. So let's say you only want to see that for a specific employee these are the users right here under assigned to these are your users or your employees that you've put in so you can actually limit this to say only show me this information for these people or you can say only show me the tasks or the visits or the reminders or the events or the requests this is all deep stuff that you don't have to get into but the point is once you get all your data into jobber it's all there it's all organized it's all searchable it can all be filtered down for you to find exactly what it is you're looking for you can say show me unassigned jobs or assigned and unassigned you can filter it in every which way that you can possibly imagine so let's not spend any more time in here because i know this video is going to get long and let's come over here to clients so here's your clients there's not a whole lot to show you here uh, but if you want to make a new client here's where you create the new client and the same form that came up before came, comes up here and you can also as I said you can unclick billing address the same as property address so that you've got a billing address and you can add separate properties to that click back on clients make sure we admit oh yeah you can tag your clients you know if you just want to add labels to them but you know you don't have to it's a nice function it's not one that I use but if you have let's say you're working for homeowners so you want to tag your clients in terms of their level of income or how likely they are to submit quotes or you know if some of them are just not nice people and you want to tag like hey by the way this is one of the rude ones so be careful when you give her a call you can add some tags 
Next is requests. So this is where they'll be if other people make requests. So if you've embedded your request form on your website or sent the link to somebody to go in and create their request, this is where those requests are made. Next, quotes. This is where all your estimates are. Every time you write a quote or an estimate, and by the way, it's just another neat feature Jobber has. Some people like the word quote, some people like the word estimate. There is functionality once we get into the settings here. There's actually functionality for you to change the word. If you wanted to say estimates everywhere, it will say estimates everywhere. If you wanted to say quotes everywhere, it'll say quotes everywhere. But it'll show you your drafts first. These are ones that you haven't even saved yet. So it assumes you want to see them because that's probably the latest thing you're working on. It's unfinished. Here's your drafts. You can open that up and you can finish it and send it. Here's all the ones awaiting response. And then be beneath that is going to be all the approved ones. And then beneath that is going to be the ones that got converted into jobs. But this is where all your quotes will be found. Again, this is intuitive, guys. You want to see your requests. You click on requests. You want to see your clients. You click on clients. If you want to see your quotes, click on quotes. And guess what? If you click on jobs, it's going to show you all of your jobs. There's received, requires invoicing at the top. So these are the ones that you've closed out. You've said the job's done, but you haven't yet written an invoice. It's going to prompt you when you go into here, hey, here's the ones that require invoicing. These ones say that they're late because I created these whenever I was making other videos in the past and I haven't come in and closed them out and invoiced them, etc. So it thinks that they're late jobs. And then down here somewhere, here's unscheduled, so that's the next set. And then here's action required. And then finally at the bottom, archived. It keeps all this stuff in order. And look, it come over here and tell you, you have 16 that are late. And you can click on those and it'll just show you those. If you want to know if you have any with actions required, click on action required. And then boom, there's an action required. So something in here has been left undone. How many upcoming? Click on upcoming. Boom, here's all the ones that are scheduled ahead of time for January 17th. Those are all your upcoming jobs. Next, click on voices, <clears throat> invoices. And these are the two awaiting payment. If there was any that are late, they would be above these and they would say late. And then here's awaiting payment, there's drafts, and there's invoices that were paid. Keeps it all organized for you guys. Reports. Reports are really great. I'm not going to dive deep into the reports. We're already at an hour on this video, but suffice to say, whatever reports you would like to pull from Jobber, there's a feature for pulling those reports. It really doesn't matter which ones it is you're looking for. If you want to see all of your invoices with additional client data. You can change which columns you're looking at right here. You can email the file of whatever it is that you filtered down over here. You can do anything. These are just for invoices created between December 5th and January 4th, like last 30 days. You can also say, show me the last 12 months and apply and there's all the invoices from the last 12 months that it'll show you. These reports are really great but I'm not going to deep dive into the reports because I need you all to see the actual features and functionality instead. Little reminder now that we're an hour in, don't forget there is a link in the description of this video. It's my link for you to get your free trial of Jobber and it does come with 20% off. So if if you find value in this video, if I've provided you with some value and you're going to try out Jobber, please do me a favor and use my link for that. Get your discount and it lets Jobber know that I'm doing a good job because I am a brand ambassador for Jobber because I've been with them for so long. So it just lets them know that I'm kind of doing my end over here as well. <clears throat> Expenses. Oh, look, I've actually added some of these. There's a strainer basket right there. So you, the way these got in here is you just open up the app on your phone. You take a picture of that receipt. You type in there that it's a strainer basket. You put in the price. Uh, let's open this up. 
reimburse to Ray Duke. If this was one of your other people that did this, like Bob Smith, he's the one that bought it. When he puts it in, he can say reimburse to Bob Smith. You can attach it to any job you want to attach it to. And this is just going to save all of those. And again, there's no data limit on this. You put as many of these in here for the next eight years as you want to put in here. It's going to save all of them and it's going to save them permanently. And you're always going to be able to go back and refer to these. Next is timesheets. I don't have any fake timesheets set up, but whether it's me, I can choose to clock in and out for the day on the app if I want to. I can also choose to clock in and out of certain jobs if I want to, and so can your employees. But all of that would show up here, and what it's going to give you, let's click on approve timesheets. So here's mine. Apparently I've got 12 seconds of time that I clocked in for on October 7th. But any of your employees that you have, when they're clocking in and out, this is the page where it's going to show that they've clocked in and out, and it's going to add up all their time. And then you're going to have a little button you can click in case you need to check it over and make sure they're not lying. And you click approve, and now you've approved that timesheet. And then you can come over here to confirm payroll. See this uh, from old video I was... Oh, this is Bob Smith. See, we changed that receipt to Bob Smith. So now right at the top here, Bob Smith is still awaiting payment. So go ahead and click to open this up. He needs payment of $12 for that strainer basket that he bought out of his own account. So once you give him that payment, you can click Mark Paid. And now you've tracked that. So if Bob Smith comes back uh, three months from now and says, Hey, you, you never paid me for that. You can come check in here and you can say, Nope, looks like I did. I marked you paid. And then apps, I'm not going to dive into the apps. I do want to point one thing out in the apps that is going to be important at some point in the future. And that's down here. This is Zapier. If y'all are following what's going on with AI these days, it's pretty insane. Zapier is integrated with Jobber. And Zapier can be programmed to do a lot of actions and functions within Jobber for you. And then you also have ChatGPT, which can integrate with Zapier. So in the end, I don't think it's going to be long before I've created my own personal assistant within ChatGPT, which integrates with J Zapier, which is integrated with Jobber. But either way, you can tell Zapier to do a lot of automatic actions for you if you want to dive into that, if that's your kind of thing. But I'm not going into that on this video. Suffice to say that Jobber has partnered with a lot of companies that do a lot of really amazing things. And I do encourage you to check these out. Maybe I'll do some videos on them later. But today is not the day. So back to home. We're more than halfway through, just so you guys know. I'm going to take you into the settings now and just show you what you can do in here. So right off the bat, we pop in at the very top company settings. You got your company name, all your company info, your website, your business hours. You can change all these. If you know your tax settings, depending on the state and county and etc. that you're in, you can create automatic taxes to get attached to these jobs if you're doing that. But that is your company settings. Nothing else you need to see there. Second is branding. Now, as you guys can see, here's the Bulletproof Handyman logo. All I had to do is, well, the same way to replace it. Let's say you just got Jobber and you want your company branding on there. You want to look professional. You don't want this to just be a white piece of paper that says you owe me 30 bucks. You want to look like a company. So mine's already here. If it wasn't, there would be an upload button. Since mine's already here, there's now a replace button. I can click on replace. And what this is going to do is allow me to upload a logo. It looks like the logo size is 5 megabytes, which is perfectly fine. But if I click on Upload Logo, it'll allow me to search the files, the photo files on my computer, double-click on my logo, and it's going to upload it here. And boom, that's it, guys. You're branded. Your brand is here. All you had to do was this one thing right here, and you are now branded. You can also change the PDF style. For quotes, for jobs, for invoices, you can do different types of headers. You can do, let's look at, see what it looks like if we do the clean version. So there's the clean version. Logo size, maybe I want a small logo, I don't know why, I kind of like the larger size. Or let's say I prefer orange, we now have an orange estimate. Or a blue estimate. 
I kind of like the blue too, but I stay with the green. That's the jobber color, and I kind of like it. It's a peaceful color for me. You can do the font size for the footer to whatever different size you want it to do. You can click all these options in terms of what's going to show and what's not going to show and where some of it's going to be. Save changes. It's looking like my internet must be slowing down. I hope everything's recording fine. It better be cancel. All right, change PDF style. Oh, yeah, guys, I think my internet. Thank God I don't need internet to record a video, only to upload it, because it looks like the internet on my PC might be going out. That is going to mean I'm not going to be able to dive into a lot of other stuff. Yep. And my internet is definitely out. Let's check it on my phone real quick. Turn on Wi-Fi. Now it says I'm connected. Why am I not connected over here? Uh huh. There we go. All right, refreshed. Everything's back. So let's come back up here to branding. Change PDF style. Save changes. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I'm not going to waste y'all's time looking at it. Just showing you that these are all the things you can do here. Okay, products and services. A refresh. I have definitely... Oh, well, it is raining today, so that's probably why I'm not getting service. Well, this is just horrible luck, isn't it? All right. If y'all want to skip ahead a couple minutes, you can. I'm just going to keep on recording while I'm doing this. Well, this is just awesome. Request header or cookie too large. I do not even know what that means. Okay, let's see if we can open custom fields. We can. Let's try to open products and services. There we go. We're in products and services. So everything worked out. So these are all these line items I was telling you about. All these line items you see here are mine. Here's 1 through 25 of a total of 145 of them. If you need to create a new one, click on Add Item. And you need to decide, is this a service or a product? So for me, that means labor or materials. So you can click Create Service. You name the service. You put a description for the service. You can put your cost over here on the left. That's what cost is for. So let's say, in fact, let's make this a product. All right. And say you buy this product for $5. So you put $5 right here. And let's say that you always do a 20% markup on all of your materials. So now this automatically tells it that it's going to be six. So then later on, if your cost changes or if you want to change your markups, you can come change those and all of this will automatically update down the line. Something else I really love is that you can upload an image for these. These are really, really great. I'm not going to take you into my photo albums on my computer, but the point is, let's say it's a, a sink pop-up stopper. You can put a picture of a sink pop-up stopper here, whatever the product is, or if it's a service like, say, cleaning out a cleaning out a dryer vent, then you can have a picture of like a clean dryer vent or a picture of you sitting next to it doing a thumbs up or something. But you can add a picture to every single product and service if you want to. And then by the way, while you're creating these, so let's say whatever this product is, you want it to be part of your online booking because the things you do online booking for need to be things that kind of have a set amount of time that they're always going to take so that you can know that this particular job is going to take an hour and I'm going to do my online booking in one hour increments. But you can turn online booking on or off and then you can tell it how long it's going to take. So for this one, let's say it's a 30 minute job. Now we've told it that this is a 30-minute job. When people go to do online booking, which I'll be showing you, Jobber will know, based on the schedule you've already put in when you schedule these jobs, 
Jobber is going to know already where you're going to be, where your last job was, when you scheduled that job to end. It's also going to know the address of that job and the address of the person who's trying to book you. So it's going to know your drive time and it's going to know how long the job takes because you've just told it right here that it's going to take 30 minutes. So it's going to be able to allow people to book you in between jobs. So if you booked out a morning job on Wednesday and an afternoon job on Wednesday, but nothing right in the middle of the day as long as you have online booking available if somebody goes and sees that that block is open and they would like you to do a job that's within the driving distance and time they can book you to do that job and if you don't want them to you just don't set any of this up but if you want to fill your time in more you can and you can also do just like a general labor like one hour of labor for a set price and let them book you so that you don't even know what you're going to do you just know when you get there you know they're going to be asking you to move boxes or something whatever it is they want you to do and then you click create i'm not going to click create because i send this out this whole list is what you can request all of my custom line items is the document i was talking about that you can go request in the description of this video product and service cost so you can turn this on and off if you don't want it there and this is where you're going to import so guys if you go request my line items this is where you're going to come to import them so we're under products and services i'll just click on that again to sort of refresh it so once you get into products and services if you've downloaded mine you go in let me show you from the very beginning click on settings in case you're not already in settings and then click on products and services and then scroll all the way to the bottom of products and services and you're going to click on import CSV select CSV file and that's going to take you to all of your files on your computer so that once you open them up you've put my file there that you downloaded you select mine it uploads it into here and guess what you have all of my products and services that I've created all of my custom line items are now in your job or account and all you've got to do is open them up and say ah, I don't think twenty seven dollars I think I'm gonna do that for twenty six dollars or you're gonna add a markup to it or something like that and that's all for that block Next, custom fields. I'm going to tell you what these custom fields are for. So I work for property managers, right? And each property management company is different. You're going to find this if you're working for realtors, if you're working for homeowners, all types of things. There are going to be clients of yours who want to have certain information listed out on their invoice, on their estimate, etc., etc., that are not already in Jobber, right? Jobber gives you what's generic, and then you get to go customize it. So if you want to create a custom field, for example, a client custom field, you can create. Here's one called referred by. So if you want to have a custom field to know when you create a client who referred that client to you, you can create that field in here. You can create custom fields for properties. So each property that you may be going back to multiple times in the future, you can have a custom field for that property to say things like, this is an asphalt roof, or this is a stone roof, or this is a different type of roof, or this one's way outside of town, or you want to add just a notes section for each property to talk about what the road conditions are getting there. You can add custom fields, but here's where I use them. So I had clients who needed to have uh, this bill to section right here. I had one specific client that said, hey, all your invoices need to have a bill to section and we're going to give you when we assign the job we're going to give you the name and information that we want put in the bill to section and we have to have that on the invoice so since i had jobber i was able to come and create a custom field that goes on all my work orders now whether i need it or not if i don't need it i just don't fill that field in at all but if i do need it then i can click on the bill to section and as you can see i can have it and i can start it here in quotes i didn't for me they don't need to be on quotes they only needed to be on the jobs and the invoices so i started with job and then when you create the field, you tell it whether you want it to carry forward. So you can start, for example, work order. All my property managers need the work order number documented on everything I do. And I need to know their work order number as well. So I created work order under custom field and I said make it be transferable. And by doing that, I now have this work order block 
automatically. So when I fill in on my quote that the work order number is 127AB6A, when I do the job, when I convert it to a job, it's just going to carry straight through and that same work order number is going to be on the job, it's going to be on the invoice, it's going to be everywhere I put it, and you can create custom fields for your actual team members, which are kind of like your employees, your subcontractors, uh, your secretary, whomever. So there's custom fields, jobber payments. There's not a lot for me to show you here. This is a demo account that I'm on and you can't set up payments in a demo account because they don't want anybody accidentally charging money and moving money around. But under job or payments, basically if this was your account, you would just go and click it to set it up. You would give it your name, your address, your company, tax ID stuff, what bank account you want stuff to go through, <coughs> etc. And this is how people are going to pay you. So they can go in and pay with a credit card into your job or payments. And this is also what I was talking about at the beginning. If they make a deposit, instead of taking four or five days to clear and make it to your bank account, you can go ahead and do the instant payment that same day. Moving on to expense tracking. Guys, I don't have anything to show you here. You did see those receipts and stuff earlier, so those are very handy. What I haven't dove into is accounting codes, and I've got a family member who, or a very, very close friend of the family who's been doing small business accounting quite a bit most of her life. So I'm going to have her sit down and teach me accounting codes, but essentially you can put a lot of your expenses in here. You know, there's a different code for, let's say I take a property manager out to lunch and that is somehow going to be tax deductible because that's a business expense because I'm recruiting a new client. You're going to have a different accounting code for putting gas in your car. You're going to have a different accounting code for purchasing materials, a different accounting code for purchasing tools, etc., etc. So you can set all of your accounting codes up if you want to dive that deep, or especially, which we should all have and I don't have, but a really good secretary slash admin person. Who knows how all this works? But you can set up your own personal accounting codes in here for everything. Next, we'll pop down to team management. This is where you add your team members. Let's go to add user. So you can put in their name, address, phone number, if applicable, uh, all that other information per hour cost. So if you're going to pay them $20 an hour, you put that in here. Now when they go clock into their timesheet later and when you're approving timesheets, it's going to do all the math for you in terms of that per hour cost. This is the part I like, is you can customize the heck out of their permission levels. These are sort of presets here up at the top that are going to give you certain permission levels without diving into the rest, but you can let them view their schedule, or you can let them view and complete their schedule, or you can also let them edit their schedule, or if it's a manager, you can let them edit everyone's schedule. And this goes all the way down through here. You can decide what they can and cannot view and what they can and cannot adjust within here. Uh, you can let them know how what they can and can't see with the client's properties. And then you can turn that on and off for requests, quotes, jobs, invoices, reports. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that email subscriptions. I haven't dove into that. Uh, invitation language. Ah! This is another new job or feature. Your teammates now can choose English or Spanish. They have set the mobile app up now for Spanish. So if you have hired some people who speak both English and Spanish, but they're more comfortable in Spanish, if that's their main language, they can be receiving everything on their app as they're doing their job throughout the day. They can be viewing and receiving and sending things in Spanish instead of in English. And then save user. Yeah, and I'm not actually going to try to save this user into here because I don't need to because it's not real. It's just a video. Next, work settings. So, quote reminders. Add a reminder to your calendar to check on quotes that haven't been converted for three days. Now, this is not the automatic follow-up reminders that are sent to the clients. This is for you if you want your own reminder. 
job arrival windows. So you don't want to schedule a job to start at 10 a.m. and have some crappy customer that says, oh my God, you were here at 9.45 instead of 10. It's too early. Or you say 10 a.m. and you get there at 10.04 and they decide you're late. So this is where you set up your arrival windows. I always do an hour in my actual main jobber account for my business. I do one hour arrival windows. So that way I'm not going to show up before. I'm not going to show up after. I've got a whole hour in which to show up. And you can tell it whether you want the window to start after the start time or center it on the start time. Whew, there's so much here, guys. Invoice subject, so you can have a default subject line for your invoices. You can also say, like, I'm a net 30 company because my clients are net 30, so I can't be net 15 if my clients are net 30, and that's just how many days they have to pay you after an invoice is sent. Invoice reminders, statements, oh, by the way, they do chemical tracking. This is more if you're uh, like a landscaper or, say, a pool guy, where you're going through chemicals and you actually need to track that legally or just for your own purposes, or if your customers want to be able to receive reports of what chemicals were used as well. So, there's that. Sched yeah, leave site. Don't worry about any changes I tried to make. Schedule. You can sync. Everything you do in Jobber, almost everybody is on either Google Calendars or iCalendar with Apple. Whatever you set up here in Jobber, if you would like to, you can have your schedule in Jobber and all of your reminders, etc. automatically sync with your Google Calendar. Like, I'm an Android guy, so I don't do it because I don't actually want Jobber synced with mine. That's just a personal thing. I like to keep my Google Calendar separate, and I don't have a separate Google Calendar just for the business. But if you're like a one-man show especially and this is just all you and you want to make sure you're always up to date on everything, you can set up your calendar, your Google Calendar or your Apple Calendar to sync with Jobber and anything you put in Jobber is automatically going to be on that other calendar for you. You can choose colors for different types of things. That's not really a huge deal that you need to hold a lot about. Day sheets. I don't use day sheets, but you can have it print up a day sheet for you showing what's going on for your day, and you can customize what shows up on that sheet. Location services. This is going to ask you or anybody else that's on your team that you click this for. What this is going to do is if you want... If you consent and or if your employee consents, it can track your location. And then what it's going to do is it's going to remind you to clock in when you get near a job because it's geofencing. Or you can set it up so that it just automatically clocks you in when you're approaching that job. Like physically, when you get near the address, it will automatically clock you in. And when you leave, it'll clock you out. Or if you tell it to, it will just send you a reminder to clock in or clock out. And that's the location services. It's a pretty cool feature. I've turned it on for me, but I haven't used it a lot. I'm just going to let it run for like a month and then go back and see how well it did. <clears throat> Route optimization is super neat. If you're especially like a pool guy or somebody who goes everywhere over and over, like if I was a pool guy, this would be my route here, and it's showing how to get the fastest route possible and hit all of these properties on this page in one day. Now, you can add some more to this. You can add other addresses and other properties. So as you acquire new pool cleaning clients, you can add them to this. And once you add them to it, you can come up here to the top and click optimize. Maybe you added five people this week that you're gonna start on next week. So you add them, you click optimize, and it's gonna reroute all of your routes now so that with your new people, you still have the most efficient route possible. It's not a feature I need much, but it is a feature that I really like because there are a lot of pool guys and stuff who are making the same route week after week. Next, job forms. I told you I'd come over here to job forms. Let's open up my kitchen sink form. So after somebody repairs the kitchen sink before they can close out the job, they have to click repaired sink. Oh, this is just the form itself, so I can't actually click it off because this is just where you make... Let's try preview. There we go. And then they have to click all of these before they can be done. 
before they can actually close out that job. And this is the form. So if I wanted to edit it, I could go ahead and edit it now. And then click Save. And boom, that form is saved. So let's go back into job forms from scratch again. If you want to make a new job form, let me show you the types of forms you can make. So you give it a name, whatever you want to give it. And then this is where you add a new section. So type the name of the section. And then under this section, what you want to tell it is, do you want a checkbox like the form I just showed you, where somebody just checks the boxes? Or you can ask a question and have a text box for them to put in. And you can do one for short answers or one for long answers. I don't really think it's necessary to differentiate between the two. Just give all the room you need. But you can ask a question and then have the box be for a typed out answer. Or you can do a drop down and then you can add as many options to this drop down as you want. Like a multiple choice test kind of thing. I'm not going to save that because I don't need to, but that's where you create your form. So you, you title the form as many sections like my inspection checklist has a kitchen section, bathroom section, common area section, flooring section, and then all of the questions with the answers beneath them. Next is client hub. Now there's not much for me to show you here on this computer in the client hub, but you can set the uh, visibility for quotes and invoices, quote approval, clients can request changes. You can turn that on or off if you do or don't want them to request changes. And they can also see your scheduled appointment times as well. If you tell them that that's what you want them to see. And that's, again, kind of the great thing is you decide what you want your clients to be able to see, whether or not they can refer a friend. There's templates in here and share. Oh, cool. Share a login. So this is a new feature that wasn't here last time I did one of these videos is share a feature or share login page. I'm getting tired, guys. How long we've been going? Hour and a half. We're almost done. So your clients can actually share their login page or you can share. So say you've got five property managers at one company. You can have this login page for all of them. Coming back up, we're almost at the end, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around if you did. <coughs> Excuse me. So I, I cannot dive crazy deep into this one. I did on the last one and not much has changed. But this is emails and text messages. So guys, this is where you're going to automate everything. All of these automatic follow-ups I'm telling you about, like quotes, quote approval, quote follow-up. Let's go to look at real quick at just one of these, like edit quote follow-up. So if I haven't received an answer on a quote, I can say I want to send a follow-up with this menu. Let's say I want my first follow-up to be four days after the quote was sent. And do I want this sent by text message or email? at 1 30 p.m. hold on oh here we go yeah because down here you can say text message or email but you can tell it you want it to be sent four days after the quote was sent by text message or email at a specific time and or seven days after and then you can adjust all of this in fact i wonder yeah, I think I wrote, this is one that I customized. It says, howdy again. We just wanted to pop in and say thank you for the opportunity to earn your business. We hope you've had time to review, blah, 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 blah. Always available to answer any questions or respond to any concerns you may have. So you can edit all of that and then click save. And then same thing. Let's just go to, oh, here we go. This is a really good one here, guys. Job follow-up. This is actually one that I meant to put in my favorites at the very beginning. So for job follow-up, what this is, is after you close out a job completely, if you have job follow-up enabled, it's going to automatically send this to their email address, and it's going to ask them to simply rank you on a scale of 1 to 10. How likely are you to recommend Bulletproof Handyman to a friend or coworker? And they can answer with whatever their answer is. It's really important. This is your way to get feedback. And again, 
I don't need to call clients after the fact and ask them to rate me. I don't need to write them an email. I don't need to sign up for some service provided by Google or somebody else that's going to go through Zapier and integrate with this and look at my jobs and then send it. Jobber already does this for you. With Jobber, you just turn this on or off, you customize your message, and they can rank you from 1 to 10, and that's going to let you know where you're strong and where you're weak. But all of these guys, this is, I could do a whole hour long video just over all of these, uh, all of these emails and text messages. This is all of the automation that Jobber's going to do for you, and it's insane just how much they do. And then to requests. Same thing here, so customize form. This is where you're gonna have a request form that can be embedded on your website. So you can make this form similar to the job forms, anything you want. And I've made this here, like your availability, which day would be best for an assessment? What's another day that works for you? You can ask all of these different questions, customize this form so anybody who has a request needs to fill out all of these blocks in order to submit their request and like I said they've also made themselves a client already just by putting their info in your system and this saves you all of that work so let's go back there's the request again tons and tons there's embed options or link options and then finally Last line, online booking. I have played and played and played with this. I love it. I'm not using it in my business yet simply because I schedule my own jobs for my property managers with the tenants and I don't want anybody booking me themselves because my schedule is already full. There are no open slots. However, I've played around with this a lot. And essentially what you get to do here with online booking is you get to go in, for example, bookable services. Now, I don't have any in here in this demo account, but all those custom line items, all the jobs that I do or don't do, as well as any job that you do or don't want to do, you can add every service that you want to be bookable. Any of these, you can go down and click them or you can create new. You can tell it what the service is, the pricing, everything, upload the image, how long it's going to take, allow customers to select a quantity or not select a quantity for it, and get all of your services added in here that you want to make online bookable. And then, like I said, when people go to do this booking, Jobber already knows based on who's booked you already at other addresses as well as based on whatever you've come in here and scheduled it knows where you are when what hours you're available how long the drive time would take between the two jobs how long you said the job should take that it should set aside for you on the spot it'll give it the windows that we were talking about so if somebody books you for a 10 a.m., you can say make all of these uh, 30 minutes before or after so that when they do the booking, they can't book 10 a.m., they can only book arrival between 9.30 and 10.30 or only arrival between 10 and 11. And it'll allow these people to just fill out your schedule. I feel like if I was working for homeowners and or if I was very new and I just wanted to make sure I was getting busy, getting experience all the time, I would definitely have my website optimized and I would have this form embedded. Let me go back and show you the embedding here. You create all your jobs, you set your hours, Jobber figures it all out for you and allows people to do that. But where is embedding? That's really the last thing that I need to show you guys. Maybe it's over here under requests. Share link, add to your view embed options for add to your website for request. Manage services, manage availability. Limit so service area, by the way, you can tell it what service area you're willing to be online booked in. So I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm not seeing it on here, but I think this is a fluke because I'm on the demo account rather than the real account because I know for a fact 
I did an online embedded form for a video not too long ago. But either way, if it's not available now, it will be available. They may be working on it. It may just simply be because this is demo software. But you can also put your online booking form. You can also embed that into your website and or make it a button on your website that will then bring them into your job or account. But this online booking, I think, is probably their biggest, newest thing that I'm pretty excited about. Again, not so much for me because I'm not looking to add that, but I have considered considered hiring a couple more helpers and making it so that they can be booked online. Just basically cutting a deal with them and saying, I'll pay you this much per hour to do these 15 different tasks and only these 15 different tasks, but you're going to be bookable online and you'll be getting alerts that say when you've been booked and then you just need to go show up, do the job and be done. But guys, that is my review. Uh, I tell you what, I do apologize if this hasn't been fun. Believe it or not, it's not easy for me to sit here and talk for an hour and 40 minutes either. But this is a full review of Jobber here. I'm sure there's a couple, you know, we skimmed over a lot where we didn't dive super deep. Because like I said at the beginning, I could spend three days taking you through Jobber and showing you everything it does that I use it for. But... That was, that was all of it. Um, last reminder, there is a link in the description. If you found value, if you appreciate me taking the time to lay all this out for you and you receive some value, please do use my link to go ahead and get your free trial started. Do know that uh, as far as the free trial, they're not going to bill you unless you actually sign up to pay. So when you start your free trial, this is not one where after 14 days, if you forget to cancel, they start invoicing you and billing you. That's not how it works. You sign up for your free trial. If you don't like it, you just don't buy it. If you do like it, you have to go tell them, okay, now I want to buy it. But there's not going to be any surprises. You can cancel it at any time. You can upgrade your plan at any time. You can downgrade your plan at any time. So uh, thank you guys for following along. And last reminder that I also told you in the beginning, if you have more questions, do not hesitate to email me at bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. I will answer your question. Most likely I know the answer because I've been on the software for years. And if I don't, I'll get in touch with the right person and get the right answer for you and get that over to you. But other guys, I hope you guys otherwise I hope you guys are out there killing it and I'll see you on the next one.